Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the net install service that's built into OS X Server. Now, net install allows you to create disk images that allow you to uh, use your server to do various things with those install images. And so it allows you to do things like uh, being able to boot uh, a remote Mac, or a, re a Mac on your network, I mean, uh, to be able to boot that from an image on the server so that if you wanted to host an image on the server, you could actually boot a machine from that. Uh, it also lets you install uh, an updated version of OS X if you've got an image for that, and you can do that right through the server itself. Uh, you just hold down the Option key when you reboot, and that image comes up, and then you can do a clean install of OS X. Uh, it's very similar to the recovery partition, uh, with the exception that uh, this install image allows you to put some custom things in it so that it installs the image exactly the way you want it to. And then there's also a, a net restore option which allows you to uh, take an image of a computer that's set up the way you want it to be and have uh, another Mac restore from that image. And so then it goes and creates that image on that Mac as well. So it really is a, a tool that allows you to uh, basically have the images and things you need for your different Macs on your network that you can then access uh, to make those things happen. And so, again, without having to have a disk or without ever, ever uh, having to have a thumb drive or download something from the Mac App Store, you're able to do it from the images that are set on your server. And so we're going to take a look at how to do that and how to set up this service today. Now, the first thing we need to do, though, if we're going to uh, use NetInstall at all, is we do need an image uh, in order for us to set that up. Now, today what I'm going to do is show you the net install uh, setup, uh, but you can do it with the uh, net restore and all that. If you're going to do a restore, you really need a, a bootable uh, clone image of some kind uh, on your server uh, or attached to it so that that way uh, the uh, net restore clients have, have an image that we can create from that. So we're going to need to have one of those two things. So what I would, do, what I would tell you to do just to get started is you want to go over to the Mac App Store right and go ahead and download a disk image uh, for uh, whatever operating system you're using now the nice thing about uh, net install is that you can create images for older versions of OS 10 as well because you may have some legacy machines uh, on your network that you want to use and so you can use older images as well to make that happen and so you just need to be able to uh, download those things and have those there and so you just click the download here uh, to get it set up. Now I've already done that, uh, but I just wanted to show you that you needed to do that first. And what's going to happen is it's going to put that image, let me just pull this up, uh, in your applications file, right? So in here I've got install OS 10 Yosemite sitting right here, and that's uh, that's exactly what I want to see happen, is have that there to be able to use. Uh, so again, let me just uh, put that down there. Now in order to uh, get started with the image, you need to actually create a, a net install image that can be used by the service. So to do that, what you want to do is come up to your uh, Tools menu, make sure you're on the server here, and under Tools you want to pull up the System Image Utility right here. Uh, let's see, I've pulled that up already, so let me just pop that up here for you. And this is the System Imaging Utility, and so what it does is this is where you're going to actually create your um, network disk images. Now you'll notice here that it's automatically found my uh, server backup. I've got a clone of my server uh, that's sitting right here, it's found that. Uh, so I can use that as an image, but you notice with this highlighted, I can't use the net install because I've got to have an OS 10 install source. Uh, so if I just hit this drop down, you see now there's my OS 10 install source that it found in my applications folder. If I just click on that, now I've got net install uh, image available to me. So again, these are the three types of images you can create. You can create a boot image. Again, that allows you to uh, boot Max over the network from a server-based image. Uh, now you can use this. This would come in handy in labs and things like that. Uh, but you got to know that it's going to take a lot of bandwidth because uh, you're running your Max uh, directly from uh, an image hosted on the server. So it's got to go over your bandwidth. And so certain uh, applications and things that might require, uh, you know, a lot of... Um, you know, a lot to use, those are going to run very slow on these images. So you want to use these, uh, you know, use it sparingly or at least know what you're getting out of it when you use it. Uh, again, the net install image allows you to install OS X uh, from a hosted image. So again, without having to download it again, they can install it off of your server. So those of you that are home users, this is probably a nice, uh, you know, just a nice feature to have. Uh, you also have a net restore image, and this would restore a volume over uh, a network. 
um, from a restore image that's created. And so, th again, the beauty of this is if you've got a machine that's already set up the way you want it to be, and maybe you want to install that on all of your machines, you could do that and it'll have everything that you've got on that image installed on that new machine. So that gives you kind of the options. What we're going to do uh, for today is we're going to do the net install image. So we're going to create that first. So we're going to go to uh, continue here. And now you, are, you have your network disk right here. You have your description. And then uh, whether you want to, this to be served from more than one server. In our case, we just have one server, so we're going to leave that alone. Um, but you can create uh, you know, whatever the network disk is here, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so you can say the name that's going to be displayed on the startup disk. And so, um, again, I'm just going to leave that alone because it says net, net install of OS 10 Yosemite. But you can call it whatever you want to call it. And you can add to whatever you want to in terms of the description here. Uh, I'm going to leave it just alone on the defaults for our purposes and say create. And so, again, I, it asks if I want to agree or disagree uh, with the terms. And so I could say agree. It'll allow me to create that image. What I'm going to do instead, let me just go, let me disagree here for a minute. Let me go back. Um, one of the things you can do, if I were to do that, it would just create a you know generic disk image. I want to show you that you can customize this image as well. Let me just click on customize. We're going to agree to the terms here. And what it does is it brings up an automator-like window with this automator library here. You see, I can move this around. Uh, on here. And what I can do is actually customize this image to whatever I want. I can say what the source is. Again, if I want it to be the uh, install disk here, I can do that. Uh, I can create whatever type of image I want in here. Uh, I can say where I want to save uh, the particular image to. Again, name it. And then I can add other things on here. So you see configuration, uh, packages, uh, add a user account. Uh, I can do all kinds of different things here. I can delete images, uh, define them. So I can run uh, different things on here. I can even partition the disks. For instance, if I just uh, click on partition uh, the disk here, and I'm going to add that uh, disk partition in there. Just pull this down for a minute. And let's add this into here. And I'm just going to get rid of this for a minute. I can actually then set up the partitioning the disk. And I can say, hey, you know, how I want the disk partition, what I want it named. So I could actually set it up to uh, basically partition the disk, wipe wipe it first before I install or OS 10, and then I can save that, and then that'll become a part of this uh, install that I have set up. So it does allow me to do a, a few different things to uh, customize uh, the disk image install if I want to do it that way. In our cases, I'm just going to leave it at the default, but I just wanted to show you that you could set up these various things in an automator workflow type setup to really get the install the way you want it. Uh, but in our, for our purposes, I'm just going to leave it as generic, continue, and I'm going to say create and agree. And then it's going to ask me where, um, where I want to install this particular uh, disk image. Now, it's got uh, built into it this netboot uh, setup here where I can install all of this. And you'll see that uh, on here, I've already st uh, started this uh, before when I was using Mavericks. I started it on my Drobo. Now, you can put this wherever you want to put it, but it's got to be in the order of library netboot, and it's got to go in this netboot sp0 folder. And you can see I already have a Mavericks image there, but I'm going to do this time is create uh, a uh, Yosemite image. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simplify this down here so that it matches the other one so that goes in there. So I'm going to say save because that's where I want to put it. And so now what it's going to do is ask me to authenticate. So let me do that here. And I'm going to say OK. And it's going to start creating the disk image. And what it does is it shows me when each of these various uh, things are done in our process. You see I've got a status bar here as it's creating it. And uh, it'll take some a little bit of time to get that done. It's going to uh, create the image, then it's going to copy the volume, create the netboot system, and then finish up. And you can see I've got my little status bar here. So what I'm going to do is let this run, and when it's finished, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here we are on the other side. You can see we've created the disk image. They've copied it, finished up. Everything's done now. So I'm just going to click on Done here. And so now it takes me back to the main screen. So I'm just going to put this uh, system image utility down here. Let's go back in and now let's set up uh, our net install uh, settings here. Now here we are in the settings with net install. And as you can see, the status uh, here, it's offline because we haven't turned it on yet. 
Uh, you can enable net install on, and if I just click edit here, uh, you can choose Ethernet, or if you've got other uh, network interfaces, you can choose which ones you want to enable it on. So in our case, it just says uh, images are going to be served to clients using the network interfaces selected below. So it's just going to be Ethernet because that's what I have my server set up on. I'm going to say OK. Uh, now I can also restrict access to images if I want to, and I can do this by MAC address. If I just click the plus here, I can say, hey, only these MAC addresses listed below are able to access my net install image. And so that comes in handy when you've got images that you um, basically just want to restrict to, let's say, computers in your lab or uh, computers at home. Anybody else with a different MAC address then would not be able to access those images. Uh, I'm just going to say cancel here and leave that alone. Now you've got your images down here, uh, which again, it shows we don't have any yet, and that's because we're going to have to set those up in a minute. Uh, we're going to edit our storage settings. You see I got this little button here. And what it does is this tells me where uh, the stored data is. It says images are, have to be placed in this format, like I showed you earlier, library net and boot, net boot, uh, net boot SP0, and then the client data is going to go in this folder. And I showed you I had that on my Drobo. So I'm going to come in here and say images and client data for my Drobo so that everything will be stored there. And as soon as I do that, you notice my images have come up now. And you see I've got a net install for Yosemite and I've got a net install for Mavericks here. And you'll notice that the Mavericks one is showing as the default. And I can change that if I just click on this one. Let's say I want Yosemite to be the default now. If I just click on this little settings area, I can say use default boot image here. And now Yosemite will be my uh, default image. So I've got that all set up and ready to go. Uh, you'll notice I can also uh, edit the image settings just by clicking on this. And it will bring me into a... Uh, setup screen here. Uh, it allows me to make it available over HTTP or NFS. And so I could make it over uh, file sharing there, Windows file sharing or HTTP. I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, the image uh, is uh, visible on and I can say either all Mac models or only some. And if I put only some, uh, what it's going to do is give me a list of all of the various uh, Mac models here. Uh, for the different years and what I can do is just specify only particular Mac models just by checking the sidebar here. See I can just specify which ones I want a particular image available on. So that, that way if you've got Macs that are uh, older that maybe can't use Yosemite, uh, you can just check the Mac models that uh, Yosemite is available on. And so you can specify and filter down to the Macs that you want to be able to use for different images. Now again, this comes in handy if you're running a, a large lab or something like that where you've got to specify. Uh, I'm just going to cancel because I, I, don't, I don't need to worry about that. Uh, again, it's still in here. I can restrict access to the image based on MAC address. So I can do it by image instead of just all of the images like we're, like I showed you above. So that's kind of nice. Uh, let's cancel that. So if you've got particular Macs, you can just kind of do it by their MAC addresses. And then uh, image index, I can actually uh, put my own index numbers if I want to do that. Um, and so it can be used to distribute the load across multiple servers. And so again, this is more if you've got more than one server that you want to put the uh, load across. In our case, we don't, we don't need to do that. We just have one. So we're just going to cancel this and leave it the way it was at the default. All right, so now that I've got everything uh, set up and ready to go, I'm just going to throw the switch to turn the service on. And so it's going to start it. And so now, again, it says that it's available in the startup disk pane of uh, system preferences for OS X clients. Now, that'll be for your clients, not for your server. So if you try to look for that on your server, you're not going to see it. Uh, you'll also notice up here we've got a connections tab that as people connect to our disk images, it'll show the host name, the IP address, status, and progress of any net installs that you have going on, uh, or net boot, or whatever. You'll see that in here as to which clients are connected to your disk images at any time, and you can monitor it there. All right, so now let me just show you one more thing. I, I did a screen share here with a Mac on my network, and I want to just pull up system preferences here, and let's just test on the startup disk area here. Let's see uh, what shows up for us. Okay, and so there you go. It takes a few minutes to get this uh, to show up, but you notice now I've got my two net install images showing up here in the startup disk pane of a uh, Mac that I have on my network. And so I could select either one of these and then click restart, and it would restart into those images and start installing, uh, walk through the installer to install Yosemite or Mavericks, depending on which one I wanted to install. So I wanted to show you how that works. You can also access these by restarting the machine and holding down the option key as well, and they'll show up. Let me just go ahead and put this down here. 
Okay, so that's all I have for this week on Net Install. And like I said, I just showed you the install portion. Uh, it works very similarly with the Net Boot and the Net Restore. Uh, again, I've heard the Net Restore is pretty fast. I haven't used it myself specifically, but uh, the restore process seems to go pretty fast. Again, when you're doing a, a clean install uh, of OS X, it's going to go at the speed uh, at which the installer normally goes uh, with a little bit of maybe slowness depending on your network and bandwidth. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.